and they are now mostly languishing at the border of Bangladesh and Myanmar. It's a shame that India that shares a very long border with Myanmar is not opening its doors for those refugees. And the decision is based on their discriminatory anti-Muslim policies. Right now, India is being governed by Hindu nationalist government, which is reluctant to give refuge to the Myanmar Muslim refugees. Some of them here even said from the government that we are willing to accept Hindu refugees, but we don't have room for Muslim refugees in India, although India is a diverse and a pluralist country. So myself and a couple of more friends are here on behalf of Indians Abroad for Pluralist India, IAPI, which was recently formed to raise voice against the growing attacks on minorities in India under a Hindu right government. So that's the reason we are here to show solidarity with the Rohingya Muslims. And we really want that India should open its doors to accept the Rohingya refugees without any discrimination. And we want Canada government to intervene into this matter urgently. Right now, I'm going to read out a letter written by Surrey Centre Member Parliament Randeep Sarai on our behalf to the Prime Minister of Canada. Basically, we got some signatures on a letter asking for Canadian intervention into this matter. And a lot of us demanded that Aung San Suu Kyi should be stripped of her honorary citizenship. So here this is the letter which was written to Prime Minister Trudeau by Randeep Sarai. He writes, on behalf of my constituents residing in Surrey Centre, a petition has been attached deploring the ongoing violence and discrimination brought on by the Myanmar government against the Rohingya population in the Rakhine state. This petition states that these acts are a clear violation of human rights law and international law. It asks that our government not, not take the crisis lightly and requests that we use all possible diplomatic tools to pressure the Myanmar government to respect its commitments under international law. In addition, the petition also demands that Aung San Suu Kyi be stripped of her honorary citizenship as her complicit involvement in the crime. Violation of power in Myanmar does not reflect our values and standards that we hold as Canadians. In closing, this petition asks that the Canadian government take the necessary measures to ensure that the government of Myanmar take responsibility for its actions and help helps provide relief for the Rohingya people where necessary. Randeep Singh Sarai. So he is the member of parliament who has written this letter. And I also want to, before I pass on to the next speaker, I just want to acknowledge quickly that we are all un at unceded coastalist territory. And this country has a long history of genocide against the indigenous peoples and we stand in solidarity with them. So I pass it on to the next speaker. I'm at loss so what more could express my gratitude to you all for coming out today despite the weather, despite having this Sunday for yourself. I thank you as a Rohingya whose entire history, families and identity is being attacked and targeted with the intention of annihilation. I thank you for standing up for us, for every single young girl who escaped rape, for every single young infant who've made it alive across the border, elderly who weren't burned alive, and young men who just escaped violent death at the hands of the military Tatmadaw. I thank you for not turning your blind eyes. Let us make it clear to our own people, to our government, and everyone in authority to change the course of the plight of the Rohingya, that we are watching. We're not going to back down anytime soon until people are helped and safely returned under peacekeeping supervision and given every right as citizens they well deserve. We won't give up. It's what we all fight for, a right to be humans with dignity. We're here to tell everyone that no humans should be treated the way Rohingya have been treated. Justice and democracy go hand in hand, and the absence of one disparage the other. We encourage democracy that is inclusive, not one that compromises the lives of millions of minorities. That type of democracy is corruption. I urge our government to place sanctions against Burmese regime. 
This is not to compromise the democratic reform of the country. There is no democracy when people are killed, burned alive, their homes are burned, and my relatives, everyone that still live there, they're still living in fear. One day that there is going to be a massacre. A lot of people have left, and there are over a million refugees that have left to Bangladesh. And there are so many, after the border is closed, that now they are displaced. They don't have anything to eat. And we hear reports every day that they're dying without any help because the Burmese government have banned the aid organizations to get in. The Red Cross have expressed the frustration of not being able to deliver aid inside the northern Rakhine state. We are watching genocide unfold silently. And as the government and representatives that I've talked to They've mentioned that the government has sent monetary aid. That means nothing. Condemnation means nothing when you don't act. When we're seeing fellow human beings dying and not doing anything, this is, this is not what we stand for as humanity. Excuse me. So I urge that there are more actions from the government, from the international communities, these people should be able to return home safely. That's a lot later. Now they need our help. Now they need our aid. What do we do to echo our voices for these people who are crying silently? We need Canadian troops to get inside. We need Canadian troops at the border to help with the living condition in the Bangladesh because having been able to eat once a day and not being able to access sanitation, that just doesn't sound like what a human living condition should be. So I urge our government, our elected officials, and everyone that is hearing us today to act, not to be silent, because this is not what we stand for together as, as a whole, as humanity. So I end here as we as we walk into the third month of this genocide unfolding in front of our eyes, we need our government to intervene, we need sanctions to be placed, we need more actions from the, from the, from the international communities, we need peacekeeping mission to happen, and we also need to improve the living condition, both of the people inside the country in Burma and outside in Bangladesh. Thank you. And there right now is not accepting Muslim refugees uh, just on the uh, on the basis of uh, their perceived bias against Muslim community. So we are here to raise our voice against what is happening with them right at their doorstep. And also we want Canadian government to intervene because Canada and BC government they both have trade relations with India. So they should pressurize Modi government to accept uh, Rohingya refugees without any discrimination as they have done in the past uh, while accepting refugees coming from Sri Lanka or from Pakistan or Tibet. Thank you so much. John, I would like to share with you personal stories of what happened to my own families. On August 25th, 2017, my family had called a little bit earlier, around one or two in the morning. And they have said that they're fleeing. They're going to have to flee. Excuse me. They have to flee because there is a troops a full of mil mil military personnel, security forces of Burma that have been surrounding their villages. And they have to start packing their things and leaving things that they might love the most behind. In the condition that they can't even wear their shoes when they were fleeing. They have to start looking for ways. And mind you, my families that, that the closest to me are made up of my uncle, who is a little bit older than me, his wife, who is heavily pregnant, my grandmother, who is 70, she can barely walk with heart disease, and my aunt, who has two little young children, two or three year old. They had to flee with no crimes committed. They just had to flee. 
Imagine that condition happening to you today in Canadian society. Excuse me, I have a cold, sorry. Um, imagine that happening to you today. Imagine that you have to flee from your home right now at this very moment. That you cannot take anything with you. That you cannot take anything with you except for your lives. And when you start fleeing, you know nowhere to go. Because everywhere is full of military personnel that are coming to get you. Being a young man in, Bur in Burma, in northern Rakhine state, as a Rohingya, self-identified, you are going to be targeted because they marked on, there is a mark on your forehead that you are a terrorist whether or not you committed a crime. That is very much of what we call injustice, right? But it doesn't end there. My uncle had to hold and carry my grandmother for hundreds of kilometers to seek a better place. And this is through jungles. There are no streets like this. They had to walk miles and miles and miles without food, without clean water, without sanitation. Where are they resting? Inside a jungle. It's a monsoon season. Rain is pouring down. They have no clothes to change. They have no place to sit under. There's no roof in front, uh, above, them, above their head. Is this a condition that a human should go through? Is this going, is it, is this going to be acceptable in Canadian society to happen to our fellow Canadian citizens? The answer is probably no. And so after a few days of fleeing, a lot of people have died being attacked by the racist mobs. Mind you, this isn't happening just because the Burmese security forces want us to die or be annihilated. They're collaborating with another minorities in the country who think that being a Buddhist is to kill others that are different from them. And being Muslim or being different in the country means you are a terrorist automatically. So these racist mobs started attacking children, women, raping them and killing them and burning them alive so that there are no evidence left of what crimes they have committed. Now I think I have said enough, but there are so many that have made it alive just at the border by the time they're crossing the border because it's, there is a river between the two countries, between Burma and Bangladesh. People drowned. And these are women and children mostly, because why? Like I said, young men, being a young man is a sin in Burma. Because there is an opportunity for you to, to create a movement, uprising against the government. That's their fear. Because they're not they're not ruling the country properly. <coughs> so they're in fear of people actually creating a movement against them. But that, that is not what we do. That is not what we stand for. As Rohingya, we don't commit crimes against others. We can't even, <laughs> we can't even, we can't, we can't even bear seeing other people being hurt. And I, you might have heard about the, the militant insurgency. You know, this is, this is out of frustration and I don't agree with any kind of violence being perpetrated from any side. But this is wrong. To equate a crime of a few futile people that have started out because of their frustration, because of their human rights deprivation, and then putting it on the majority of people who have done nothing against the government, this is entirely wrong. It is a genocide. 
and we have to call it what it is. Because when we downplay genocide, it becomes overlooked. It becomes less serious. That's why the European Union, United Nations Security Council, and so many other countries have been reluctant in terms of action, in terms of acting against this atrocity that's going on. We need more than monetary help. We need our voice to be heard. And just my voice doesn't mean anything because I am also a Rohingya. Who cares? Maybe I'm just talking because I'm Rohingya too. But your voice are more precious than I am. It means, it, it creates a magnitude of what type of problem this is. It creates the, the platform for our voice, for people who are crying silently to be heard. It is more than just a genocide that's happening to Muslims. It is a humanity crisis. And for us to let this go and let it be overlooked, we're not going to be able to protect any other atrocity that's going to happen in the same way because it is going to be overlooked again. People in power have to hear us. People in power have to know that we are watching them carefully as they execute their directions, their actions against their own citizens. Justice is for all of the humanity, not just for one different not just for one specific type of people, not just for one nation, but for everybody. And I hope that you think the same way. Now, I would like to use this opportunity to emphasize that we're going to have a fundraising um, event on November 4th, around 7 p.m. at the Charlie Rosso um, Art Gallery. And that is going to be our one platform for us to actually help because this monetary help will go directly to doc, um, Doctors Without Border. <clears throat> Mind you, a lot of people have helped us in Bangladesh. A lot of the refugees who have sought refuge in, in Bangladesh have been helped, but not enough. There are over a million people. Not enough sanitation, not enough wa clean water, not enough access to public education or health care. This is going to be a breeding ground for human traffickers to come and catch these people who are basically hopeless of their lives because they can't safely return home. On top of that, they have no future in a new land. So I, I really, really urge all of us not to be silent in this case because you're silent means that we don't have any chance of surviving. And also I would like to invite all of you, next week we're going to have an interfaith forum of you know, speaking and discussing about the problems that have happened and give you a more concrete idea of what steps you could take as a fellow citizens, as a fellow human being in Surrey, in, public, in the Surrey Public Library. And we're going to hold that event from 2 to 5. Um, and that's going to include all panels of speakers from all walks of life so that we can come together and you know, emphasize that this is not just a specific region or a specific religion problem. It, it is all of our problems because when we overlook this type of atrocity, it becomes a bigger problem like human trafficking, terrorism, and many other problems that we are having a hard time solving today. So I'm going to leave you at this, and I hope that, you know, I, I'm so sorry if I, my speech isn't clear, because this is totally unprepared, and I really, really want all of these points to be, to get across. Thank you. Justice! Who you want? Peace! Who you want? Justice! Who you want? Peace! Stop killing Rohingya! Stop killing Rohingya! Stop Who you want? Just stop killing Rohingya! Stop killing Rohingya!
Stop killing. Rohingya. Stop killing. Rohingya. Stop killing. Rohingya. Who you want? Justice. Who you want? Peace. Stop killing. Rohingya. Stop killing. Rohingya. Who you want? Justice. Who you want? Peace. Who you want? Justice. Who you want? Peace. Stop killing. Rohingya. 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 Want justice? Who you want peace? Who you want justice? justice. Stop killing. Rohingya. Stop killing. Rohingya. Stop killing. Rohingya. For all of you guys walking around, going about your day, enjoying your shopping, enjoying the day, enjoy it. You're in a beautiful city. You're in Vancouver. We have so many freedoms that we take for granted. There are freedoms, the freedoms that we take, the freedom to go home, the freedom to have education, the freedom to live peacefully in your own homes and have your own life, the freedom to have identity, to have a card that says, this is me, I'm a citizen of this place. The Rohingya people in Myanmar have been there for generations, for hundreds of years. They are not accorded these rights, these simple inalienable human rights that we take for granted. So take a moment, take a moment and look it up. Rohingya, Myanmar, human rights, because my dear brothers and sisters, they are not having them. And if they're not having them, if they don't have those rights, what good are ours? What good are our rights if we can't stand for those who don't? Really, so please take your time and look into this. There's a genocide happening right now in real time. It's happening. And you think that this would happen in the history books, that this happened to the Jews in World War II. And we say never again, never again should something like this happen. Yet it is, it is, and we're silent. We're complicit in our silence. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, I'm not here to bring you down. I'm here to bring you up, because if you can help bring these people up, if you can give them a hand up of their bondage, be a shield to them in their time of need, then you're living a life, then you're being a human being. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, spare a time for a prayer for the Rohingya people. Write your MPs, do what you can, give them what they need. They should have the same rights that we have, very simple, pure and simple. So let's help them in any way we can. Please look it up. I thank you. God bless you. God bless you all. And God bless the Rohingya people. Let's help them. Thank you. Thank you.